I was just rooting through some logs down here and I managed to find this guy. This is Enuliophis squateri, the Colombian long-tailed snake. So despite the very unique appearance of the snake with white scales around the head and the neck, and then the rest of them being black with a good amount of iridescence, there are two other snakes in the general region that look uh, quite a bit similar. One of them is from the genus Enulius, the other one is Geophis. Both of those species I just mentioned are highly fossorial, and this one's fossorial too. But the very interesting thing about this species is it's on the ground during the day and partially at night when it searches leaf litter. But at night, it oftentimes also goes up into trees, ficus trees, in search of um, eggs, reptile eggs. It has specially adapted teeth that are really sharp, and it's able to rip open those eggs really easily and then consume the insides of the eggs but it doesn't consume the, the shells. I find it to be kind of sad that it's not um, sunny right now. It's actually raining, if you look at my pants, because in the sun, these uh, have quite a bit of iridescence. Like you can see some of it there. If you've ever seen a sunbeam snake, it looks a lot like that. Off you go. Very cool snake. Definitely one of my favorites from this trip. Found this guy flying around, managed to swat him out of the sky. Very colorful beetle. I don't see these very often in the tropics. So I feel like I should. This is a flower chafer of some sort, a diurnal beetle. I don't know if you can hear that either, but this beetle uh, makes a lot of noise, talks a lot. Oops. I believe this snake that I've caught here is a salmon-bellied racer. I've been holding it more or less by the back here, um, but if it wanted to, it still could bite me. It has struck at me a few times already. I think it may be looking to bite me. I was taunting it with my left hand, the one I'm recording with. There's a lot of these snakes, like Leptophis and Oxybellus, that never really bite the hand that they're in, but are always very apprehensive of the one you're waving around them or recording with, or taking photos with, and that's what they're looking to bite. So, kind of a strange snake to handle. And this thing it's doing with its neck right now is called telescoping. And because this is a racer snake, I'm pretty sure what they're eating out here is lizards, and there's really no shortage of lizards out here. And this is a daytime active snake. Let's see how fast this guy dashes off. We've got a bark mantis here during the day. I love these, but they're really fast. And oftentimes when you try to film them, they'll just dash off. You see it there? It's extremely quick. They move very suddenly very erratically and uh, there you have it a master of camouflage but this tree isn't really doing it that much justice i just picked this snake from these vines here and it's been biting me multiple times like it just tried there uh this is a sipo probably one it's probably warner's sipo you can see it's it just bit itself that's kind of unfortunate yeah, Werner Sipo, um, Chironius flavopictus. And as you can see, it's extremely nippy. Um, but this is a non-venomous species of snake. And you may also know Chironius as machete snakes or savan snakes. Anyway, this is a primarily arboreal snake. I would say semi-arboreal. They will look for food on low vegetation as well as sometimes on the ground. And what they mainly feed on is frogs, and they also eat um, birds. During the night, they just kind of coil themselves up and lay in some vegetation. But when this uh, snake becomes an adult, it'll be over a meter long. All right, well, this one can go back in its uh, vines here. We've got a little beetle walking around on the forest floor here. This is a dung beetle specifically a Carolina copris. They're in this area because um, nearby pastures, and in those pastures there are horses as well as cattle. These guys, I don't think they really like the um, dung of the cattle, but they really, really love the dung that the horses produce. That's what's been attracting them here, and they do fly in at night as well um, towards lights, especially the street lamps that they use mercury vapor. Here is our terciopelo, or fertilance, and in classic fashion, it is um, coiled up. This is the way that you'll see a lot of fertile lances uh, sitting in the wild. Uh, this is kind of their resting position. And they even do this kind of thing when they uh, are in trees. Because this species, especially the little ones, is semi-arboreal. 
Bothrop's Asper, which is the scientific name, is the most famous of the Bothrops, and probably a second to that would be Bothrops um, Aatrox, which is the common lance head. And these two species, along with the rest of their genus, Bothrops, are responsible for more deaths by snake bite than any other snakes in Central and South America. And this uh, snake is known for being able to bite above the boot line because it raises its head. But that being said, if you think boots will protect you from snake bites, that is probably not the case. It's time for it to uh, go back in the bucket temporarily. And I'm just gonna carry it over to the forest, which is right next to me. This is as good of a place as any, I guess. I just lowered myself a bit from the trail. And there it goes. We've got a predatory katydid here, Ischnomelis pulchropenis. Typically, these will be active during the night, and they do bite, but it doesn't hurt that much. There's like a few species of Ischnomelis in um, uh, Panama, and I believe all of them are mostly carnivorous, though I'm pretty sure all of them are um, omnivores, but tend to mostly hunt stuff. And since it is predatory, if I provoke it here, you can see its mandibles there kind of evolve to tear apart insects instead of just mostly munching on leaves. There's a snake under this leaf. A cat-eyed snake, or in Spanish, ojo de gato. And even though they're venomous, they typically don't really try to defend themselves. They kind of just accept being caught. And these have a pretty uh, standard diet. They eat um, small lizards frogs, uh, and they actually go after frog eggs as well. And they have been known to eat insects as uh, juveniles. And these are almost entirely arboreal. And when they're out at night, they're searching the trees for their prey. We have seen our daytime snakes for now. So I thought I would come out at night um, and there should be some, even if it is drizzling a bit. So yeah, let's get to it. There's a cloudy snail eater in there, Cybin nebulatus. Um, a bit far back for me to reach. Let's see if I can get it with my hook. Alright, got it, finally. Not a very quick species, that's for sure. And this is what I was hoping it would do on my hook. Makes it much easier to grab them. But this one wasn't really playing until I picked it up from the ground. This one's actually putting on a really good um, example of how they ball up and make knots of themselves because other snakes that want to prey on snakes like the Cybin generally want to bite down on the head and then consume the rest of the body. And Cybin nebulatus makes that very difficult um, for any predatory snake. Also, a little bit of musk here. From this species, it's actually really stinky. They use it as an additional defense. I'm gonna put this one on the leaf here, make sure it doesn't fall. Finally came across a savage's thin toad that didn't move and was next to its burrow because I wanted you guys to see it hop in. Usually you get up um, and you're just a few meters away and they'll know that they're supposed to hop into their hole, but this one for some reason isn't. But as soon as I bother it, like I'll poke it with my hand, it disappears. Just like that, it's gone. The burrow's pretty tough to see, but usually it's there. This is a favorite of mine. This is a blunt-headed tree snake, Imantodes sanchoa. It is arboreal, as you can tell, though it does cross the ground sometimes to get from one patch of trees to another. And I'm gonna try to grab it without damaging it. I'll just take this opportunity to say, for any of you who don't know, if a snake wraps itself around something, you can't just simply uncurl it or just pull it off. Or if, if one is going down a burrow, you can't just yank it out, because that actually severely damages the muscles of the snake. So don't do that. So this snake, Imantodes sanchoa, is a pretty interesting snake. As you can tell, it has some pretty large eyes. And that's because this snake hunts mostly on vision, from what I understand. They go in these sort of trees where this one is now, and they'll search branches and leaves, uh, mainly for little anoles. These guys will also feed on frogs too, but they, they love uh, feeding on little lizards. And they, they are uh, rear-fanged and venomous. Um, those eyes I mentioned are some of the biggest um, proportionally that any snake has, taking up around one-fourth of their total head volume. All right, well, I'm gonna release this one right back into this shrub.
This is a porcupine up there. One of the weird ones with the weird tail. See that guy? So funny. Kind of caught him by surprise. Really cool. Here I have a spot belly snake, also called a yellow belly snake or Eduardo's forest snake. This is a colubrid and it is mildly venomous. And this one I think is almost fully grown. They get a little larger than this, I believe. This one was just kind of hanging around on the floor. Kind of bizarre to see this one at night, but they are known to sometimes hunt during the evening. It's a mostly diurnal species. And what it's eating out here is mostly frogs, but I think they're known to eat toads and other small um, vertebrates as well. But I thought I'd just release the snake down here and uh, at the base of this tree. So you can go find some food, some little frogs. Classic crevice dweller right here. And if I scare it by maybe, I don't know, tapping this wood. No? Come on. Leave. Well, anyway, it lives in that crack there. That's where it stays during the day. They are nocturnal. And then they come out to feed on, I guess, random de detritus and whatnot that is found on the sides of the trees because they never really go on the ground. As you can see, there is a cloudy snail eater up there. And this is the highest one I've seen so far. Uh, I think it's not really out of reach. If I get my hook out, this one right here, um, I can pull it down. As you can see on my hook here, I did manage to get the snake down. All right, now that I got this one down, what I want to do is put it up on this branch here, which goes towards where I found it. And I'm just going to wait here for a bit and see uh, if it starts climbing up the direction it came, because that is pretty steep. I'm observing it now, rising up this trunk. And it actually has a technique of getting up there where it takes its head, extends it, puts it around a higher part of the trunk, and then moves up the bottom of its body. And every time it does this, uh, it turns just a little more. Anyway, it's out of my reach now. I'm going to leave it alone. There's a big green frog up there. Can't reach it too far out, and all of this is in the way. However, I pulled this down with my hook. And there's another one sitting right here. Quite a... Uh, sizable species, whatever it is. Here it is next to my hand. But yeah, not very fond of humans, of course. It's over there now. And uh, look at that. There's a, an anole sitting over there on the leaf. That's snake food. This is Oxybelus. Snakes from the genus Oxybelus are vine snakes. I'm not sure why it's coming towards me. Very strange. But anyway, I'm gonna try to pick it up carefully because they are known to be quite bitey. It's hanging onto the branches there. I've almost got it out here. All right, success. This is a species of snake that feeds mostly on little lizards, mainly anoles, like this one here, which is just sleeping on a leaf. They are almost entirely arboreal. As you saw, we found that one in a tree. And I did say that these were venomous, but from what I can tell, they don't really harm humans. And I mean that in the way that they will bite, obviously, but if you did get envenom envenomated, chances are it wouldn't be too bad unless you had an allergic reaction. But that being said, it's usually best to avoid getting bitten by venomous snakes when possible, even if it's just a mildly venomous colubrid. Found this copophora on the ground, and that's not where this one belongs. So just have some bushes here. Ah, it's biting me. Those really hurt. Ah, there it goes. All right, very weird interaction. We have a snake down there. You see it? A northern cat-eyed snake. And look at that. So they expand their head a little bit. You see that? Sort of puff up the jaws. And the reason they do that is because they're trying to imitate a viper. Anyway, as you can tell, quite a friendly snake. Pretty cool. Let this one go back to foraging in the leaf litter. We've got a Skynax Elaracroa right here. And right next door, a millipede. Usually you don't see these guys on um, tree trunks. You can see them on branches, but I guess the activity period would be at a peak right now because it is raining. So they're kind of just walking anywhere. We've got a blunt headed tree snake here trying to get away. And this is a venomous snake, but it's not harmful to humans. And apparently they're so light that they don't move the branches that they crawl on. Um, and this is to avoid waking up the things that they're hunting. If there was like a, an anole at the end of this leaf, like they're often 
sleeping, the snake can just poke its head right up there and then strike it and it won't even move the leaf. All right, well, I'm just gonna say goodbye to this one. It's not really keen on getting down and, and letting me catch it, so uh, I'll just let it get back to hunting its anolis. We've got a Rosenberg's gladiator frog up here. Boana Rosenbergi. See if I can catch it. It's a bit high up there. Got our frog. Um, sorry for the weird lighting. There's quite a bit of fog and mist out here. This is a gladiator frog and they still get their name because males actually fight sometimes. And in some populations, they'll actually be so defensive to the point where they'll actually kill each other. And the way they fight is with uh, their thumbs. There should be a hook somewhere around there. All right, off you go. Go kill another frog. There's a snail eater up in that tree right there. A little bit far for me to grab, so I'm gonna get my hook and see if I can pull this guy down for just a few minutes. Got the snail eater. It's uh, quite a medium-sized one. To get this one down, I actually had to pull the tree down because um, I didn't want to damage the snake or harm it in any way. And it was in kind of a strange spot. So it's like, ah, uh, I'll just pull the tree down. It'll be much safer that way. And now that we've gotten to take a look at it, I think I'll just release it. Let it go back to eating some slugs, snails, other stuff like that. Hasn't been super rainy, but we did have a slight drizzle. So the leaves are wet. There's another helmeted iguana up there. It's quite a yellow tail, actually, and a blue body. And I've seen so many of these to, at this point that I'm wondering if I'm just seeing a lot of repeats. If it's just the same lizards on the side of the trail here all the time, and that I'm just finding them again, just sleeping in different areas. Because it is quite possible. I don't know if this ecosystem or this single strip of land can support so many of them. Didn't really want to take this guy down but I had already woken him up but I really wanted to show you the colors on this one because they are pretty nice uh, for this species. Some of the nicest I've seen though it would be cool if the rest of the body was green instead of gray. And here's that yellow tail. Cool guy. We've got a snake down there in the low vegetation. Got it. Ooh. That one is ready to dash for sure. This snake looks like it's Rodinia or Eurotheca, but I'm gonna lean uh, Rodinia on this one. For the region that this snake is found in, this one is a bit uh, generic in the way that there's two other genera um, with snakes that look very similar to this. Uh, one of them being Coniophanes and the other one being the one I mentioned, Eurotheca. And the way you tell them apart is with scale counts, which is kind of annoying. But I believe that this is just a snake that feeds on um, small frogs in the ground primarily. I'm sure it would go after small lizards too. And I believe these snakes are venomous as well, just not to a very great extent. People have been bitten by these in the past. That one was clearly foraging for something because it was moving on and off. So I'll let it go back to doing that. There's a Centroides bicolor at the bottom of this tree here, a bark scorpion. And I'm not sure if this one, as opposed to the other ones, is actually living in this tree. And I'll show you why. So first off, here's the scorpion. Trying to get the stung here. There it is. This is an adult male. And if we actually take a look at the tree, it doesn't have any pockets or anything. Its trunk is entirely round. Uh, doesn't really have any concavities except for at the base here. But there's not many places to live. And you'll notice that all the other ones were found on ficus trees. And there's a good reason for that. There's a lot of places to hide. This one may or may not live here, but there's a good chance that it was just crawling here along the forest floor and made its way to this tree, but may realize by dawn that it's not supposed to stay here and may have to find another place to stay. I just spotted a coral snake in here, somewhere next to the log, and I don't have my snake tongs with me, so I'm gonna have to use a stick or something like that. All right, it took me quite a bit of work and time, but I finally managed to get the coral snake. Quite a bit of iridescence on the scales too. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna keep it in this bucket overnight and then I'm gonna release it in the morning. It's not moving much right now, but I promise you it is alive. You see they kind of flatten their body a bit there. It is the next day. It's uh, dawn and yeah, I'm gonna release this snake. Cool thing about uh, these elapids, and I think a lot of other coral snakes too, 
is um, their diet mainly consists of freshwater eels, Sicilians, and uh, lizards, and other snakes. Kind of a strange diet, but pretty cool. Got a little banana grove here. Might as well just put it here. Coral snakes, if you don't already know, are not really a striking species. I mean, they're, they're, they're striking in, in the way that they have some nice colors, but um, they don't uh, strike at humans um, unless you are holding them. Anyway, quite a quick snake. Off it goes. Well, that will be all for this video of looking for snakes in Western Panama. So thank you for watching.